there are actually three aspects of learning. The first is known as intake. This is the brain's taking in of new information through a sensory apparatus, such as the skin, tongue, nose, ear, or eye, to generate the sense of touch, taste, smell, sound, or sight, respectively. For example, when you're listening to a talk, such as this podcast, the information reaches you through your ears. It hits you in your tympanic membrane, and the cochlea inside your ears converts it into electrical signals. These electrical signals are then taken up into your brain, into a place called the auditory cortex, which is inside your temporal lobe. This is where these electric signals are decoded into the information that you perceive as sounds, words, and meanings. Similarly, when watching a live show or video, the gestures and expressions of the performer or speaker reach your eyes and images hit your retina, which is then converted to electrical signals that are sent to your visual cortex inside your occipital lobe. Again, this is where your brain understands these signals like images, shapes, and meaningful visualizations. The first step of learning, though relatively effortless, is very crucial. The more information you intake, the more you get to learn. The next aspect of learning is informational synthesis. At this stage, the brain combines all the received information to make complete sense of it. Like the auditory and occipital, every primary sensory cortex has a secondary association cortex that arranges all the pieces of information back together and forms a big picture. Here, the brain constructs a three-dimensional view of the world around us and what we actually perceive as reality. It then derives meaning based on this perception and context of all the information pieced together. But it's not enough just to let information in and process it. The information must also be stored. This brings us to the third aspect of learning known as memory. Memory is the glue that holds reality together and links each moment to the next. Memory creates the existence of the uninterrupted feeling of time passing. There are two main types of memory, which I will now briefly discuss. The first is what we can think of as immediate or short-term memory, also known as the working memory. This immediate memory is stored in the prefrontal cortex, which is in your frontal lobe. A great example of this is being in class and seeing the teacher write on a chalkboard. Short-term memory is when you go through the process of remembering what you just saw and read on the board, and then processing it and writing it down in your notebook. The second type of memory is long-term memory. The hippocampus, located deep within the temporal cortex, comes into play here. It uses practice and repetition to turn short-term memories into long-term memories and makes complete learning possible. Most of the information we get is subconsciously processed and lost in our daily routines. This information typically only stays in our working memory for a few seconds before it fades away. As a result, we must be deliberate in paying attention to any information that we want to store in our long-term memory. So with all that as a backdrop, you may now be wondering, how does the brain learn new information? When a piece of new information enters the hippocampus, one thing that happens is the formation of a new synapse. A synapse is the connection between two neurons, but a new synapse is fragile and can easily break, or rather the memory can get lost unless it is strengthened. Repeated firing of the synapse leads to long-term potentiation, which is one of the fundamental building blocks of learning. With this repeated firing, the synapse gets stronger, needing progressively less effort to fire until you're performing the action without much thought at all. This is why the example I gave at the beginning of learning to kick a soccer ball goes through the stages of practice leading to habit formation and eventual intuition. I recently discussed 
the science that goes into habit formation in episode 108 if you'd like to learn more about it. So now that we've learned how the brain processes new information, let's talk about what concepts are associated with learning. Over the last few decades, a broad range of brain regions and cognitive processes have been discovered and associated with learning, including memory, logic, decision-making, and reward processing. For learning to be complete, certain concepts have to be in place. These concepts include motivation, attention, and memory. Motivation drives you to seek knowledge and information in the first place. Without the desire to learn, it simply will not happen. Attention enables you to concentrate on receiving information and understanding it enough to be stored. And memory, as earlier mentioned, makes learning possible by storing, representing, and reactivating information when it's needed. If there's no memory to store what we've learned, then we simply will not be able to use it. 